Up until now, we've been able to create a smart contract which can calculate the address for a given liquidity pool. And the reason why we need that address is because we're going to call a flash loan function from that pool address on PancakeSwap v3. Once we call that flash loan function, we're going to receive the funds and then we need to do something with those funds and pay back the flash loan. And so in this video, we're going to get that all going. We're going to create a function that we can call from outside of Solidity. We can you know, call it from using JavaScript or TypeScript. If we can call the smart contract function, we will pass the data for the swap we want to do into that function and it will borrow the money from PancakeSwap v3 and it will call another function that we'll write which will execute what we want to do, i.e. arbitrage in our case. So let's go and take a look at this in a bit more detail. Right now, if I go over to PancakeSwap v3 and I get the factory address here, which I'm going to do and pop that into BSC scan, I should then be able to go and get our pool address. Remember here, if I go to contract and read contract, and if you're not familiar with this, just check out the previous video. We did all of this in a lot of detail. Let's go down here to get pool. And if I go over here to my code and to our flash test script, I can paste in the WBNB address and the BUSD address here, and we'll just use the pool liquidity of 500, or I should say the pool fee of 500. Once I have this, I can then go here to my pool contract, which is ending in 6687 in our case, and take a look at that. If I go over here to contract and write contract, this is where we will borrow the money for our flash loan. So here, this dot flash or this four dot flash, this is where we'll borrow the money. And you can see here, it takes in a recipient, i.e. who we're gonna send that money to, and are we borrowing some funds for amount zero. So this will be for token zero and token one. If you're not sure which one is token zero and which one is token one for this contract, you can go to read contract and it will tell you token zero and token one. In our case, token one is BUSD and token zero is 95C, which is WBNB. So we will actually be using token one. We'll be borrowing BUSD. Now we need to make sure, again, we're passing data as bytes here and so we have to take human readable data turn that into you know machine code and then we will decouple that code we'll pull it back into human readable information later on in our smart contract as you'll see how does this all work well let's go and investigate it let's go to code and type in flash because that's the function we're going to be calling and here we go if i hit that twice it actually brings up the function for that flash loan and so let's see what happens. We pass in that recipient, the amount we want to borrow of token zero, the amount we want to borrow of token one, and the data as bytes. But then what does it actually do? Well, I'm just going to skip some bits here to get to the parts that really matter. It says, hey, if the amount zero is greater than zero, then transfer that amount of token zero to the recipient. Otherwise, if amount one is greater than zero, then transfer that amount of token one to the recipient. And that's not an otherwise, actually that's a both. Both of these could be true, neither could be true or one could be true. So we're just gonna pass in an amount of zero for token zero. I, I don't wanna borrow any WBNB and I'm gonna pass in an amount of token one, which will be BUSD in our case. So we will borrow that. If you want to borrow different tokens, remember you need to go and use a different pool. So use a different liquidity pool that works with those tokens. Here we're using the liquidity pool for WBNB and BUSD. Now here's the interesting part. You'll notice that it actually wraps this here into an interface for Pancake V3 flash callback. And it wraps this message sender, which will be our smart contract. And it says call this function dot Pancake V3 flash callback and pass in fee zero, fee one, and data. Notice here that it's also getting a balance before and a balance after this execution has happened. So what is this execution? This function is gonna be a function we create within our smart contract. Once the, the funds are borrowed, it will basically call this function here. And then we will be able to do a bunch of work and then check the balance after we've done that work. As long as the fee plus the amount we borrowed is available, 
then this will all go through. I.e. if we don't pay back the full amount of the flash loan, i.e. our arbitrage is unsuccessful, none of it ever happened. It'll fail. And so the transaction won't even go through. All we'll lose is the cost of the gas for processing that transaction. So that's what's actually going on here. It's going to look for this function. Here, if you take the I pancake swap v3 flash callback, and we just go and punch that in here and hit enter and scroll down, you'll see there it is calling it and there it is importing from interfaces. And so it's going to look for this function. This is the interface here. It's going to look for this function. And that function is going to pass in a fee zero and a fee one, i.e. a fee for if we borrowed token zero and a fee if we borrowed token one. And it's going to pass that data as well as bytes. And then once we receive our funds here within this function, we will be able to then get that data back into human readable code or information that we can program with. So don't worry if this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you yet, because you're actually going to see this working in code now. First of all, let's go to our flashloan.solidity file. And just above the constructor here, let's create a struct and we'll call this flash callback data. We can call this really whatever we want, but I'm going to call it flash callback data. And then we're going to pass in a uint of amount zero and a uint of amount one and an address, which will be our caller and an address, which will have two addresses in an array. And we will call that our path. And then we will also create one here called a uint eight, which will have three integer unsigned integer eight bit numbers in them. So that'll be, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, for example. And that there will be the exchange route. And then finally here we'll put in a u int 24 and call that the fee. So what is the struct that I've just created? This is going to represent our data. So if I go back here to this data that we're going to pass in as bytes, this is the data that I want to be able to send to my smart contract. How much of amount zero I want to borrow, how much of amount one I want to borrow, who the caller is, i.e. this is you know going to be myself, a path. So this will be the path of tokens. What tokens are we actually going to be working with? So this will just be an array of token addresses. And this could be the swap that we want to do. For example, I could pass in, you know, USDT or Pepe or Pepe and cake or whatever I want to pass in those. This will be the path that I'll pass them in as. And then the exchange route will be, you know, on the first swap, what do I want to do? On the first swap, am I using PancakeSwap v2? Am I using, you know, bakery swap? What am I using? Ape swap? Well, in our series, we're going to just be using two exchanges. PancakeSwap v3 and PancakeSwap v2. But this is where I could define what exchanges I wanted the swaps to happen on. So if the first item in the array was a zero, that could mean PancakeSwap v2. If it was a one, it would mean PancakeSwap v3. And then in the second item in the array, if it was a one, it would be that swap for the second trade will happen with PancakeSwap v3. So I'm just saying, what trades, what exchanges do I want to use for what trades? And so here by using arrays, we can do this using very little data, but controlling a lot just with one smart contract. So that could look something like this. It could look like zero, one, zero. This would mean do the first swap on PancakeSwap v2, then do it on PancakeSwap v3, and then back the last one on PancakeSwap v2 before you pay back the flash loan. And so this is how you can think about these paths and this path here would just be the address. So that could be cake and WBNB, for example, that we could be doing a flash loan on. So this will be the data that we will be passing in. And so we need now a function that we can call from outside of our smart contract. So here I'm going to say function and we'll call this flash loan request like such open and close parentheses. And you guessed it that is basically going to take in similar kind of information. So here we're going to say we'll take in an address, two items, and we need to put that as memory. 
and therefore we'll call this path. And I'm putting the underscore because this is a parameter of a function and that's how I like to do it. And then here we'll pass in uint 256 amount uh, zero. And that in our case is going to represent WB and B, but it depends on your smart contract. And then the next one here, we're going to pass in, here's the same thing again, but that is now going to be amount one. This will be BUSD. And then over here, I want uint 24, and that's going to be our fee. And then finally, our exchange route, which I'll just say is uint 8, and that'll have you know three uint 8s within it. And that again needs to be memory, and we'll call that exchange route or ext route for short. Excellent. And then here, what I want to do is call this external and then we're going to perform actually creating our array, our, our data bytes here that we've created a struct for. So let's get all this information and put it in a struct. And so here, this will be a bytes and that'll be bytes memory data is equal to abi dot encode. And this is how you encode data. And it's going to be our flash callback data that we just created a struct for, which has the following information. So we can just say here amount zero, and that's going to be um, uh, equal to the amount zero. And then after that, we've got amount one, which will be amount one. And then we've got the caller, which we didn't pass into our function that we'll call uh, from ethers.js. So we'll actually just say that is message.sender. That's who the caller is going to be. And then path is going to be equal to path because we're passing that in. And then exchange route is going to be uh, equal to the exchange route. And then finally, the fee will be here yeah, underscore fee. And let's hit save on that here as well. Now over here, I'm going to get rid of this console log that we had under the constructor. And then straight after this here where we've gone and encoded our data. Sorry, I need to put a semicolon on the end of that. I'm going to now console.log just some empty string to create some space when it prints out to the terminal. And here I'm going to say console.log and let's actually print out here the pool address again. So let's call this flash loan pool address. And then here we'll put in the address of the pool that we're borrowing from and close there with a semicolon on the end. And then I Uniswap V3 pool, we will pass into this the pool. So this is the interface for Uniswap V3 for the pool that we want to call the flash function from. So here we can go flash. And what are we going to pass into this? So we need it. Remember, when we're passing into this function, we need a number of things. We need a recipient, an amount zero, an amount one, and then the data. So what is the recipient going to be? Well, it's this address of this actual smart contract that we want to receive the funds. And the amount zero will be the amount zero that we've passed in above and the amount one will be the amount one and then finally the data. So now you can see how to actually go and wrap your address for the pool, which we know our pool address because we have it stored up here. We did that in the last session and we wrap that here in this interface so that we can call flash on that interface. And then here's our recipient. It's this smart contract that we're calling now. Now, when that gets called, remember, if we go back into the actual code here, into the flash, so here I'm just going to say, you know, flash. And let's see if I can go and find it again. Uh, there we go. It's going to call this pancake swap v3 flash callback. So it's actually going to be calling that. And so we need to create that function for it to call. So once this gets called, it's going to look for that function. So we need to create it. So here we're going to say function pancake v3 flash callback. And I just want to make sure I've got that exactly right. So I'm actually going to copy it from here exactly. And I'm going to paste it there. 
and then open and close parentheses. And here we're going to pass in uint and that there we'll just call it b0 and then v1. And I'm not putting the underscores because I want this to look exactly like it looks with the interface. And then bytes call data data. And theoretically it should work anyway, but that's what I'm going to do here. I want it to be exactly the same. And then here, this will be external. And this is now where we can actually interact with our code. And so first of all, what I want to do is just put in a require here to say that the message dot sender should be equal to the address of the pool. Now this might be confusing to you. And actually, let me explain that now, but let's first put comma not authorized. So this is a check that should be in place. Why would the message sender not be me, the same person who's the message sender up here? This is this would be, you know, my private key and account or my account, I should say account address, not private key that this is uh, is calling up here. But down here, when this functions running, it says the message sender should actually be the pool address. Well, remember, it's this pool that is calling this pancake v3 flash callback. It's the, the pool contract that's calling that. And so if the pool contract's calling it, then the message sender is actually the address of the pool whenever we're talking about this function. And that's why up here we created in the data information about who the caller actually was. That's why we did this up here. That's why we created that. So brilliant. We've now got that working there. And so what I now need to do is actually get the decoded information of that data back into human readable format. So I'm just going to say flash callback data, memory, decoded. And in this decoded variable, we'll say ABI. And this time it's dot decode, not encode. And it's the data, comma, and then in parentheses here, flash callback data. And semicolon on the end. And that will give us this data that we're passing into our flash loan request. So flash loan request will get, will, will be sent all of this information. It'll encode it into bytes. And then when it calls the flash loan, so here with the amount zero, the amount one and who wants it, i.e. this smart contract, that data will be passed in as bytes. But then over here, when this is called, because that data is passed in, we can now decode it in this function. So this up here in flash loan request, we're encoding the data. And then down here, we're decoding the data, which is excellent. And so here we can now initialize this and say IE RC20 base token is going to be equal to V0. And that should be greater than zero if if it's greater than zero, if it is, then token zero is going to be our base token. Otherwise, so colon over here, token one will be our base token. In other words, it's going to be the first token that we trade from. And then the uint 256 acquired amount. So every time we do a swap, we'll have an acquired amount. And that there we'll just say is equal to same thing again. So here we'll put fee, we'll just copy this exactly. And instead of using token here, we're going to say if the fee is greater than zero, we'll say decoded dot amount zero. So that's how we can now get that information from the decoded. Otherwise, it's going to be decoded dot amount one. And so now you can see we can call all of this information here. Let me scroll up from this flash callback data struct, amount zero, amount one, caller, path, exchange, route, fee, that all lives inside of decoded. And so here we can call them from decoded over here. Now let's just do some console logs and test this is all working. So here I'm going to console.log and I'm going to say fee zero and that there is going to be our fee zero, which is being passed in up here. And remember, the fee is just what we have to pay back as an extra fee because we were graciously given this flash loan by Uniswap or PancakeSwap in this case. And so these flash loans carry a fee. If you use something on, for exa example, the Ethereum blockchain, then you can actually 
use uh, Balancer, for example, I believe it is, where I don't think there is a fee. Or double check me on that. I've actually forgotten. It's been a while since I've worked with that. And then here, console.log, we're going to do base token. And that's going to be equal to our base token over here. And then here I'm going to do console log and this is going to be borrow. And that's going to be our acquired amount. So the amount that we're borrowing, if it is basically greater than zero, then it's going to be this amount one. Otherwise it's going to be amount uh, zero over here. Now you'll notice we have an error here because it's trying to get this base token and print it out as an IERC 20 but I actually need to just get the address of that. So this will be just the address of that base token that we're printing out over here. Let's actually go and run this. And by the way, it should fail because we are not paying back this flash loan right now. So right now this would technically actually fail, but let's go and run a test to go and deploy this flash loan and then actually call it. So here we've got our deploys uh, and get pool address test over here. So let's call this here Binance Flash Loan Pancake Swap V3, for example. And then instead of having this it deploys and gets pool address, here I'm going to just write another group of tests. So I'm going to say describe. And this here will just say something like deployment and testing. So I'm not writing proper unit tests here, really. I'm just using these as ways to group. Uh, what I'm testing and print things out. So we're not doing any any serious unit testing over here where I'm writing asserts, uh, etc. like I normally uh, should do or would do. And so here deployment and testing within that we're going to say, you know, it uh, deploys and performs fl flash loan. Arbitrage. We also want to call this flash loan request function that we've created over here. So what I want to do here after we've deployed it is actually go and connect to it. Now, remember, we need an, a path, an amount zero, an amount one, a fee and an exchange route. So let's go and create that now. And so what I'm going to do is say initialize flash loan params. And so that'll be const amount borrow, which we will be call calling our ethers library because we need to take from the utils library, the pass units. And the pass units will allow us to give an amount and an amount of decimals. And for BUSD, the amount of decimals are 18. You can check that on Binance Smart Chain when you put in the address for BUSD. So the number of decimals is very important. You need to know that for any token you're interacting with. And here I want to borrow 30 BUSD and I want to format this in a format that the Ethereum virtual machine will understand. So that's how I do that here. So this won't just show as 30, it will show as a big number. And then here I'm going to say const token path. That is going to be equal to, we'll put here cake and WBNB as our token path over here. And then our exchange route will say const routing is going to be equal to, let's say we'll start with Uniswap V3 um, to do our first trade and then PancakeSwap V2 to do our second trade and PancakeSwap V2 to do our final trade. I can do any mixture here of what exchanges I want to use, but I'm just going to set this up as default. And then here we can say const our fee for Uniswap v3 is going to be equal to, uh, we can just say 500. You could use whatever liquidity pool you want to interact with, but I'm going to use the one that uses 500 as the fee. And so here we need to connect to our flash loan contract. And I'm going to say const contract flash loan. Now, technically, we already have the contract up here, but the reason I'm writing this out is if you've deployed the flash loan contract, if it's already on the mainnet, you won't be using this. So you would actually have to go and connect to the contract. And this is how you would do it. So here we just say ethers.contract. And for now, we can just put pass in here the flash loan dot address because it's already 
up here. We've already got it from being deployed by deploying it here. But if this was already deployed to mainnet, we would put the actual mainnet address here. And then we need the ABI for, for the ABI flash loan, which we imported previously. Now over here, who is our signer going to be? Well, we're going to need to actually impersonate a whale at some point. But for now, what I'm going to do is just create a signer. And Hardhat makes that really easy. I can just say con signer is equal to await ethers.get signers. Open and close parentheses. And there we go. So that'll be my signer. In fact, it's an array. So let's just destructure that, put an array around it. Because remember, when you run npx hardhat node, it actually gives you a whole bunch of signers and wallets. And we just want the first one of those. So that's why we'll grab that first one from here. And here I'm going to put signer over there. So great. Now we've connected, or let me stop that running here we've now been able to write the code to connect to our flash loan smart contract. And so here we're now going to call our flash loan request function. And so to do that, we say const, I'll call it transaction flash loan is going to be equal to await. And then that's going to call here our contract flash loan dot flash loan flash loan request open and close parentheses and we need to pass in there the token path we'll path pass in zero for amount zero because we're not borrowing any wbnb and then amount borrow will be the amount of busd we borrow the fee v3 will be what we called that above and then of course we have the exchange routing as well so that will give us our transaction there and here we can then say you know show results and this here will be const transaction or TX flash loan receipt. And that's going to be equal to await TX flash loan dot wait. And so that will wait for that to all happen. And then here we can write an expect. So we can write some unit testing here. We can say expect that the transaction flash loan dot receipt dot status and that should be dot two dot equal or EQL one. So if the status is one, we know it's successful. Now, I think this should fail because we've not paid back the flash loan. But let's just go NPX hard hat test and see how this gets on. And there we go. It's running deployment and it did fail. You get a whole load of red writing. We'll talk about failures later on. But right now, I expect this to fail. Right? This should fail. And it says, you know, exception while processing transaction reverted with reason string F1. If you actually look at the smart contract code, you'll see here we've got this F1. And this F1, there's information above that will tell you what that means. But what it means is we didn't pay back the flash loan. That's what this means. And that's fine. What I'm interested in is seeing that this printout happens. And it did happen. Let's go back here to flashloan.sol. And here we go. We've got our fee zero, our fee one our base token that we've actually borrowed and the amount that we've borrowed. So that is successfully printed out. And what that means is if it has successfully printed out, that means we have successfully called our flash loan function and it's got all the way down to here, meaning we have borrowed the funds. We should now be able to go and do something with those funds. And so that's what we're going to focus on in the next session. We're going to focus purely on finishing off this execution where we can then actually perform the swaps and also pay back the flash loan. Now to do all of that, what we first have to do is we need to go and imitate a whale address. So we need to go and imitate an account that actually has BUSD. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to send BUSD to the flash loan smart contract. You wouldn't do that in the, in the real world, in real life, but we're gonna do it here to pretend like the, the arbitrage should have been profitable. And I've made a spelling mistake here. This shouldn't say not authorized, so correct that to not authorized. But so far, this is really, really good. This is a really good sign if this is all working. If it didn't work for you, if you got this error, but you didn't get these printouts as well, 
just go back and you know check the code and read what it actually says or what you can also do is go npx hard hat compile to compile the solidity smart contract to make sure that that's all compiling successfully